Uh, Madam Chair, you've chosen on this hearing to pick a pretty contentious topic for us to deal with and uh, an important topic, uh, but a topic uh, that uh, not likely to see much uh, change of position on either side. And that, of course, is your prerogative, and uh, I respect that. Uh, but I'm going to be fairly forceful in my statement because just as you feel strongly about this issue, so do I, so do many of the colleagues on my side of the aisle. So uh, I'm proud to have the opportunity today to publicly state my unwavering support for the Hyde Amendment. This language, uh, named for its original sponsor, the late Congressman Henry Hyde, prevents federal taxpayer dollars in the Labor, Health, and Human Services Appropriations Bill and federal and the federal uh, contribution to the Medicaid program from being used to pay for abortions with limited exceptions to save the life of the mother or in very difficult circumstances of a pregnancy that result from an act of rape or incest. It's estimated that this provision has saved the lives of over 2 million people since it was first adopted in 1976, most of them people of color. Before the enactment of this provision, the federal Medicaid program was paying for nearly 300,000 abortions annually. The Hyde Amendment has been included in some form in every appropriations bill for almost 45 years. It's enjoyed bipartisan support every year, regardless of which party held the White House, the House, or the Senate. During the Obama administration, President Obama maintained the Hyde Amendment in each one of his budget proposals. As recently as last year, then Vice President Joe Biden expressed his support for the Hyde Amendment. Sadly, he seems to have uh, abandoned that long-held position uh, just this year. The majority of the American people, however, including a majority of low-income women, also support the Hyde Amendment. Even uh, most people who identify themselves as pro-choice on abortion issues don't want their taxpayer dollars to be used to pay for someone else's abortion. The Hyde Amendment protects the conscience rights of the great majority of Americans who are opposed to publicly funded abortion for religious, moral, or simply fiscal reasons. Hyde leaves the people and the legislatures of all 50 states free to provide state funds for abortion if they wish. In fact, most states have voluntarily decided to follow Hyde's policy, sometimes by a direct vote of the people. Rescinding the Hyde Amendment would impose a pro-abortion funding policy on states that have decided against it. Hyde allows states to choose whether or not to fund elective abortions with taxpayer dollars, and the people and elected representatives of 34 states have voluntarily chosen not to do so. Without the amendment, abortion would likely become just another basic service that all states must fund as a requirement to participate in the Medicaid program. Finally, I want to address head on what I believe is perhaps the most insidious falsehood about the Hyde Amendment, and that is that free abortions are necessary to help low-income women and women of color succeed in this country. Most Americans who support the Hyde Amendment believe that an abortion is the intentional destruction of innocent human life. It's not health care for women. Refusing to cooperate with or pay for the destruction of someone's child is not an action against that person, but for them and their community. Americans should want life for poor women, women of color, and all women and their children. As stewards of the federal tax dollar, we cannot and should not participate in encouraging a choice for taxpayer-subsidized abortion. Women of color and all women deserve resources such as prenatal care, uh, well baby care and more child care options and support to enable them to fully care for their children. These are policies I've supported as chair of this sub subcommittee and as ranking member and will continue to support as long as I'm in public office. Put simply, abortion capitulates to despair and says there's no hope for the woman as a mother or for the child. Supporters of abortion should also question whether the promotion of abortion is itself structurally racist since it disproportionately affects people of color and substantially reduces births of women of color to a much greater extent than births of white women. For example, Planned Parenthood, which operates the largest chain of abortion clinics in the United States, disproportionately locates them in or within close walking distance of minority neighborhoods. Finally, black women are disproportionately represented in the Medicaid population, and their abortion rate is over three times that of white women. Ending the Hyde Amendment and providing state-funded abortion to low-income women 
will mean more black lives lost, especially at this time when our country is facing some very difficult and appropriate conversations about how groups have been treated in the past and continue to be treated today. We need to be advancing public policies that support women of color and their families and not policies that end the lives of the unborn. Let me make a final point, Madam Chair, if I may, and that's political reality. I don't think opinions on this issue are likely to change. And should the Hyde Amendment be removed from the Labor, Health and Human Services Appropriations Bill, I think there would be very little Republican support for it in either the House or the Senate. And particularly in the Senate, it looks, no matter what happens in Georgia, as if the um, filibuster rule is likely to be maintained, given the statements of Democratic senators. So I see this as an effort that is not likely to bear fruit in the next Congress. Although, again, I respect your prerogative as chairman, certainly, to hold a hearing on whatever matter that you think uh, is appropriate. And before I close, I, you know, I want to especially thank our witness, Christina Bennett, for speaking to us today. Christina has a powerful story to tell, and she has a voice for many who have no voice. Christina, I look forward to our discussion today, and thank you for coming before us. With that, Madam Chair, again, congratulations to you for becoming our uh, chair. Uh, for our current chair, thank you for being with us once again. You've, we've always been your favorite, just as we will be the next fairman's favorite, uh, and I yield back the balance of my time.